Uh, you yes, moderated a panel here uh, in which you had polar opposite ends of the political spectrum. When you talk to those people, when you see what's happening in Washington, are you optimistic or pessimistic about the future of health care in America? Well, let me say something at the outset, and I tried to stress that this morning. Uh, health care is personal to all 300 some odd million Americans, and so Washington has to get it right. It, you know better than most, and many times in Washington, the, what's best for the country is not on the top three list of the participants down there, but this has to change, because this is personal, it's serious, and you're talking about people, whether it's a heart issue, cancer, uh, an accident, they have to feel the coverage they have today is not being diminished by what happens in Washington, ideally enhanced. And they're going to they're going to render their verdict in uh, November of 2018 on whether what passed out of the House and what passes out of the Senate makes their health care better or makes it worse. Well, there's two aspects to what we're talking about here. One is how you pay for it, the coverage, and the other is the direction that health care takes in terms of providing services to the people. Starting with the coverage aspect of it, the Republicans have, and Director Mulvaney made the case, that th th they have focused on the idea of giving states more flexibility. We give you the money, you decide what to do with it. As a former governor, does that make sense to you? Generally, that's a code word for we give you less money than you're currently, uh, that you currently need and you have to figure out how to do more with less or pony up some of your own money. If they in fact gave the states the money they need, uh, I do like that concept of states tailoring the program to meet their own particular needs. Now, in terms of the way healthcare is delivered, the theme at this conference seems to be uh, value add, uh, that we deliver value, we get paid for the value of the diagnosis and of the treatment as opposed to fee for service. But this has been talked about for years and the American health care system has not changed. No, it hasn't, and it's, it, in theory, it's a good idea. I would like to see it work, and I've seen a few examples in the private sector where a third party determines whether or not value has been added. Um, we talked earlier about uh, UCSF being a third party in determining whether social service costs in uh, Northern California were reduced by what, they, uh, what a vendor did. So if, if you're willing to have a neutral, unbiased third party be the determinant of whether value has been provided, I think the concept works. But at the end of the day, it has to work for the patient. And as I tried to stress, uh, you've got to reward patients who try and do the right thing. If you don't smoke, if you don't drink, if you work out, if you try and eat the right foods, you are helping make America healthier because you're putting less burden on the rest of the system uh, to try and cure you from any disease you may have encountered, whether it's a heart attack or diabetes or any other disease that is directly related to your, to your lifestyle. Well, we're in Silicon Valley, and so much of the talk here is about how technology can help deliver this value proposition. But others say, here's the problem. Every time we add some new technological breakthrough in healthcare, it just costs more money. And that's part of the problem with pushing costs up. Well, it could be, and again, the administration wants this to be patient-centric, uh, so that's why I was happy in our panel we had two doctors uh, who get direct feedback from patients as to what is working and what's not. The Affordable Care Act may not have started out to be very popular, but it now has a 47% approval rating. The earlier version of the bill that passed out of the um, House of Representatives a week ago today has 17%. I suspect the version that passed out has less than that. So that is a signal from the American public saying, you haven't got it right yet. Well, what would it take to get it right? How do you split the baby in half, as it were, uh, and take care of those in need, but then don't have them subsidize the person who smokes and drinks and doesn't work out that you were talking about? Well, I think you have to, you have to look at it from a patient's responsibility. Now, the, the Jimmy Kimmel model, I mean, that poor child, I mean, uh, he came into the world not knowing uh, the problems he had. Jimmy Kimmel couldn't have done anything different. Um, but clearly, heart disease, uh, diabetes, and other, uh, other uh, diseases, and heart disease is the biggest killer, um, do result in part from your diet and your lifestyle. And th there ought to be a way in which the onus is put on the individual to try and do the right things. So if they do have a problem, 
it's less severe and they're better able to cope with any surgical uh, remedy that, uh, that, that is necessary. I would draw up the problem from the patient's perspective, not from a vendor's perspective who's trying to get a piece of the action of the, of the healthcare book. Healthcare pie. You were the former governor of California, the sixth largest economy in the world. Fifth when I was governor. <laughs> well, there was a recession in between. But going forward, Governor Brown has suggested this is going to be the center of opposition to President Trump's policies. Can California pull that off? I think if you listen to what Jerry Brown said, if there are areas that we agree, like infrastructure, we want to work with the president. We think it's absolutely right. We have a third world infrastructure in this, in this country and to be a world class economy, that has to improve. But if you're going to take away benefits from people under the Affordable Care Act or you're going to make life more difficult for a state that frankly is a leader in innovation so we depend on NIH grants, you know, then we're going to oppose you. I mean, and that's our job. Our job as Californians is to fight for California. Well, is there a realistic threat to the state from the federal government in terms of money or any other regulation? Well, we hope not. And uh, as I say somewhat comically, we can always secede. The, the Pew Charitable Trust did a, s a survey and said all in, California gives about 25% more to the federal government than they give back to California. So we can, we can, if we have to, we can survive on our own. You now, if we go to war, that may be another problem. But, uh, but uh, domestically, I think we can, we can hang in there just People fine. People have talked about that. Do you think that's at all realistic? No, no, I don't. I'm just, I'm just kidding. But, I, but I do think you have to treat states fairly. And California, which contributes disproportionately to the federal government, allowing them to solve problems in other states, um, should not be punished. It should be praised.